$1 trillion flooded out of the crypto market yesterday. Why? The fear that Google's quantum chip Willow will finally be able to be the thing that breaks Bitcoin. The chip is able to perform a task that will take other supercomputers 10 septillion years in order to complete. Its Quibit processing increased to 105 from its latest predecessor, Sycamore, which had just 53. And the question arises, Will this be the end of Bitcoin as we know it? In 2008, Bitcoin had no value. In 2010, it was too volatile. In 2012, it was used by criminals. In 2014, it was just a bubble. In 2016, governments would ban it. In 2018, other cryptos were gonna replace it. In 2020, it used too much energy. In 2022, CBDCs were gonna replace it. And in 2024, quantum computing is going to be Bitcoin's downfall. Today, I'm gonna to cover why quantum computing is just the next piece of propaganda that Bitcoin will overcome. And I'll show you exactly why and all of the people who will prevent it from happening. Let me just name a few real quick. Sovereign nations, hundreds of millions of individuals, corporations, pension funds, endowments, politicians, billionaires, tens of thousands of developers and node runners, and you. To all the quantum maxis out there, Bitcoin's response is TikTok, next block. This is Dante Cook with Bitcoin Simply. Let's go. Yeah. All right, I won't leave you hanging for very long. Will quantum computing kill Bitcoin? No. It's not even remotely a concern that we have to worry about for a long time. But let me just start with the practical information of why this won't happen, and then I'll get to the facts later in the episode. Quantum computing will not have an impact on Bitcoin because there's hundreds of millions of people and even billions of people in the future that will prevent it. First group of people, the millions of people already storing their wealth in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, which is the most widely known and has had the most spectacular success, might be the equivalent, as you said, Bill, to digital gold. In the previous world, the analog world, what cash was to gold, in the digital world, digital money may be to Bitcoin. Let me give you an, another example. We live in a time where one out of every four dollars has been printed in the last five years. We are de actively debasing our currency. And at the same time, Bitcoin has, in, into its design, programmed scarcity. You can yeah. never have more than a certain amount of Bitcoin. And so the dollar is depreciating. Bitcoin is appreciating. Quick factoid. In 2018, the average American home would have cost you over $260,000 and over 400 Bitcoin. Today, the average American home is now over $460,000. It would cost you less than five Bitcoin. Group two, corporations. MicroStrategy just purchased another 21,550 Bitcoin, bringing their total stack to over 423,000 Bitcoin. That's 2% of the entire Bitcoin network. You don't think that Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy would be willing to fund the developers to implement quantum proof hashing algorithms? Or what about Riot, who just raised a $525 million convertible note offering at 0.75% due in 2030 to buy Bitcoin? Or Microsoft, who's scheduled to vote on Bitcoin being on its balance sheet today? What about sovereign nations like Russia? Russian state Duma deputy Anton Chakhev proposed that Russia should create a strategic Bitcoin reserve. Do you think Vladimir Putin is gonna sit to the side and watch a quantum computer destroy his nation's wealth? What about Iran, who's now looking to embrace Bitcoin? What about all the nation state leaders attending the Bitcoin conference in the Middle East? The UAE's top newspaper just said that Bitcoin may rise astronomically under a Trump presidency on the front page. Or what about Prince Philip of Serbia, who says that strategic Bitcoin reserves are already being built behind closed doors? I love this post from Luke Broyles. If America adopts a national strategic Bitcoin reserve, the odds of Russia doing it are 10x. If Russia adopts a national strategic Bitcoin reserve, the odds of America are doing it are 10x. If America or Russia does it, then China's chances of doing it are up 10x. The game theory will continue to play out. Can you imagine what would happen if the United States actually did this? What's really going to happen here, my strategy would be, and I really think it's evil genius strategy. <laughs> you dump gold, demonetize the entire gold network. You buy Bitcoin, you buy 5 million or 6 million Bitcoin, you monetize the Bitcoin network. All the capital in the world sitting in Siberian real estate or Chinese natural gas or every other currency derivative that's held as a long-term store of value. Europeans, Africans, South Americans, Asians, they all just dump their crappy property and their crappy capital assets and they buy Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin goes to the moon. The U.S. is the big beneficiary. U.S. companies are the big beneficiary. And while you're doing that, you normalize and support digital currency. And you just define digital currency as the U.S. dollar backed by U.S. dollar equivalents in a regulated U.S. custodian that's audited. 
What happens next? $150 billion of stable coin goes to a trillion, two, four, eight, and probably somewhere between eight and $16 trillion. And you create six, 10 to $20 trillion of demand for US sovereign debt. And so you're like, while you're taking away a little bit of the demand because the capital asset of Bitcoin grows, you're adding back the demand to back the stable coin. The United States and Russia are now in an arms race to acquire more Bitcoin. It'll be sort of like the space race from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. The nation who dominates the next global frontier dominates the global race. This doesn't account for any of the other actors who have a vested interest in protecting Bitcoin and the value of it, like BlackRock, ETF issuers or holders, or anyone else. But let's move from the practical stance to the factual stance. Let's do a quick breakdown. Today, computers use processors called CPUs or GPUs, which compute in zeros and ones. But quantum computers use qubits, which means that they can compute in multiple states, zeros or ones or bits at any given time, which allows them to process information faster. Now over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin uses two types of encryption, SHA-256 and ECDSA, elliptical curve digital signature algorithms. One is for mining and one is for private public key pairs. In 1994, a guy named Peter Shore discovered that ECDSA encryption would be vulnerable to quantum computing attacks. And in 1996, a guy named Lav Grover said that SHA-256 would also be vulnerable to quantum computing attacks. Lots of attack vectors have been thrown out there from quantum computing, but there's two main concerns. One, Quantum computers will be able to mine Bitcoin and solve blocks faster than other computers, which would leave the chain vulnerable to a 51% attack. Or they'll be able to find people's private keys and spend their Bitcoin. Let's debunk this right away. Google's Willow chip reached 105 qubits. And reach is an important word. That's because it's really hard for it to sustain this sort of processing power without a lot of errors. Because you need physical qubits and logical qubits, which Google hasn't developed yet. You can see in this image that it released in the press release about Google Willow. You need logical bits in order to be able to do more than just routine tasks with quantum computers. And to go even further, in order for Google to crack SHA-256 or ECDSA encryption, it would need to do this. It would not only need 1,000 to 3,000 logical bits, which we just said that it hasn't been able to do at scale. It would also need 1,000 to 10,000 physical bits for each logical bit. So this means that there would need to be millions of qubits. And today, the processing capability is at 105, not to mention error rates that would grow as its capability increased. The amount of coordination, energy, and effort in order to implement this sort of attack would be massive and would take up the majority of the world's resources. I know people said that Bitcoin would use all of the world's resources by 2020. Here are a few other reasons why this in logical sense would not happen. I asked my research assistant perplexity, how many assets are in the global banking system? And it came back with a number, $410 trillion. Why would any logical computer or intelligent AI go after Bitcoin when it could go after a much greater pool of assets, 400 trillion versus 2 trillion, and it will be able to successfully get those assets with much less effort. It doesn't make sense. Wouldn't you go after nuclear codes or government UFO files or Hillary Clinton emails? I'm just kidding. But seriously, there's a lot of other places where encryption would be used to crack codes that would go before Bitcoin, which would only give more strength and stability to Bitcoin's network because Bitcoin would be the only network operating that wouldn't be shut down by these cyber attacks. And so this is really important. One of the things that Bitcoin can't even protect you from are the security measures taken by crypto exchanges. Exchanges who don't take the necessary steps and precautions to protect your Bitcoin. And this is why the Bitcoin way exists. Members of their team will walk you through proper 100% self-custody, step-by-step so you can remove all counterparty risk, stop sharing keys with third parties, and ensure you protect your generational wealth the right way. Go to thebitcoinway.com and schedule a free 30-minute meeting with their team. Bitcoin is programmable money, which means it can change according to the attack surface that's presented to it. Satoshi Nakamoto was talking about quantum computing attacks for SHA-256 in 2010. There are several options that could happen. Bitcoin could simply just fork and maintain the history of the blockchain that happened before the attacks and simply fork over to a new protocol that maintained that same history after an attack. Here's what Gloria a Bitcoin core developer had to say on Natalie Brunel's show, Coin Stories, about this very topic. There are people that are thinking about this and have been thinking about this for a long time. This isn't a concern within the next 10 to 20 years. 
Can you talk about any threats that exist with AI? Some people are worried that these ultra powerful machine learning computers can kind of crack Bitcoin. Is that possible? I'm not too worried about the AI kind of angle to this. I don't think AI is very well suited for these kinds of problems if you're trying to break SHA-256. I think people sometimes worry about quantum computers, and I think that concern is maybe a little bit more interesting on this time scale of like 30 to 50 years, not like tomorrow. But there are people thinking about this. If people were more concerned, you would see more about it. My understanding is like quantum wise, because you're thinking of the threat as like 30 to the 30 to 50 year kind of scale. And there's a lot of free active research being done. Like every year it gets extreme, like a lot better. And so I, I've heard of kind of quantum secure signature schemes being like kind of POC'd for Bitcoin, where they're like, yeah, we can do it. But the signature size is going to be like a thousand something bytes. Like we were talking about block space, right? Like that kind of sucks. And if this is only going to be applicable 20 to 30 years or 30 to 50 years from now, we can benefit from another 20 years worth of research to make this a lot more optimized and a lot more usable and suitable for our use case. All I'm trying to say is like the concerns that you've voiced and that you know are probably coming from somewhere people think about them but they have a very like practical and like thoughtful approach to to how to deal with those kinds of concerns protecting bitcoin against quantum computing is important because bitcoin is the only unfiltered unadulterated source of truth in history that we have in a world full of information lies distortion, and a lack of transparency from government and institutional entities. 15, 16 years of unadulterated truth. Right. It is a pillar of truth that the longest piece of truth we've ever had in humanity, and it's only growing. And that's why the world is waking up to it. And that's why the world is starting to unfold and the cracks and all the bullshit and happening in the planet will all start to unravel thanks to Bitcoin. Secrecy like the Bank of England saying it will hide the identities of any pension funds, insurers or hedge funds bailed out under the new financial stability tool to prevent a wider crisis from spreading into the markets. This message was embedded into the Genesis block of the Bitcoin blockchain, the chancellor on the brink of bailouts. This is why Bitcoin exists. And this is why it will defend itself against quantum computing attacks. Join the people who will be defending Bitcoin against quantum computing attacks at the BitBlockBoom conference in Dallas, Texas from April 3rd through April 6th of 2025. The conference has been running for eight years and it's getting even better. People from all across the world come for this three-day conference to gather with like-minded people and to have a good time. Your ticket will allow you to learn from some of the greatest thinkers in Bitcoin like Guy Swan, Parker Lewis, Gary Leland, Bob Burnett, and others like me. It'll also allow you to get hands-on training in Bitcoin beginner workshops and get access to exclusive events and parties like the Saturday Casino Night. Your ticket is all inclusive and you can get $100 off your ticket by going to bitblockboom.com and entering the promo code BBB25. That's promo code BBB25. I'll be there and I hope to see you there. This is Dante Cook with Bitcoin Simply. Happy stacking. Mm -hmm.